Have you ever wondered why we experience a power outage whenever there is a heavy downpour? Why does the value of the Naira keep falling against dollar? And why does the benchmark of the Tesla keep falling? You're welcome back to Nigerians Economy Today. And thanks for joining us on the program. Obviously, the pandemic has read havoc on the economies of the world. And the manufacturing sector in Nigeria is not an exemption. We are looking at the challenges manufacturers are facing during this pandemic. And uh, to lead the conversation, in the, the, to lead this conversation is the DG, Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Dr. Muda Yusuf. He will be joining us via telephone. Dr. Muda Yusuf, are you online? Yeah, thank you very much. I'm here. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Yusuf, for joining us on the program. I know you are the DG of a very strong uh, advocacy group that supports the manufacturers. Now, what do you think the challenges manufacturers are facing during this pandemic? Well, thank you very much. Uh, the challenges are multi-dimensional, and uh, the impact varies from sector to sector. First, we have what I will call the macroeconomic impact. Uh, that reflected in the economy in form of first the contraction in the economy, that is the lull in economic activities, and uh, we already have predictions that we are likely to see a recession as a result of that. Mm. Secondly, because of the sharp drop in oil revenue, we have a major challenge with our reserves, foreign reserves, and consequently, the exchange rate. So we have witnessed a very sharp depreciation in exchange rate. And because this economy is a highly import dependent economy, the economy is highly sensitive to changes or fluctuations in the exchange rate. So all over the country now, people are already feeling the impact of exchange rate depreciation in the form of the inflationary pressure that has resulted from that. Raw materials, finished goods, prices have increased by between 20 to 50 percent. Mm. Then we have the revenue effect. Revenue effect has to do with the revenue to government. Government has a major responsibility to provide infrastructure, to fund its recurrent expenditure, to pay salaries, and to also sustain some of the social services in the economy. So the drop in revenue is affecting the capacity of government to discharge these obligations. And once there's a failure on the discharge of this obligation, it has a way of affecting operators in the economy because it affects purchasing power because when people are not paid salaries yeah. who will buy the goods that are produced by these nurses you know so that is another major 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 effect so at the macroeconomic level the, the impact has been very profound and many businesses as we speak are finding it difficult to continue to sustain their businesses then because of the COVID restrictive measures, lockdown, anti-state restriction, even as we speak now, some sectors of the economy have not been released from the uh, lockdown. Exactly. Like the entertainment industry, uh, aviation is just about exactly. to, be, to, be, to be allowed to function. So all those sectors, many of them have practically collapsed. You can see the rate or at which 
airlines, uh, laying off even pilots. You know, pilots, I mean, these are highly skilled professionals. Mm -hmm. Airpiece announced laying off about 60 pilots, another announced about 100 pilots, and also aircraft engineers. So these are major shocks for those this kind of economy. The same is true for the hotels. The hospitality industry, they haven't functioned effectively for the past six months. So quite a number of them have also closed up and so on. The same thing with entertainment centers, event centers, and all the ancillary businesses around all these sectors. <laughs> So there's a major lull in all of those, all those, all those sectors. The same thing with private schools. We have a lot of investors there. And many students are not paying school fees because they still have to roll their children and not in school. So all their facilities, access, everything is being run down. So these are some of the issues. Uh, we are glad that government has responded through the Economic Sustainability Plan uh, by way of intervention. And the financial backing for that plan is about 2.3 trillion. So it's a good plan on paper. Uh, we await the implementation to be able to be able to assess the true impact of, uh, of, of this intervention. So it has been really very serious. Uh, many workers have been laid off. Some of them are on half salary. Uh, some of them are just uh, on compulsory leave and all of that. So the shock has been quite, quite, quite enormous. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Muda Yusuf. Uh, Dr. Muda Yusuf is the Director General of Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It, you, you mentioned the fact that the challenges have been very profound, especially when we look at the macroeconomics. You also mentioned the fact that some sectors have been much more impacted than the others, especially the hospitality industry. They've been out of business in the last six months or thereabouts, the entertainment industry. What do you think the federal government can do for this industry, especially the ones that are still locked down presently? Well, uh, the government is already taking steps to review the lockdown. The state government just announced plans to reopen some uh, social clubs, restaurants, and so on. So by the time we see an increasing review of these restrictions, uh, businesses will begin to pick up gradually. The Lagos state government also announced a one billion fund to support the hospitality industry through its uh, Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. The federal government has announced some package within the context of the Economic Sustainability Plan, which also covered quite a number of sectors. So these are some of the things that the government has been doing, but we believe the government can do a lot more by providing more uh, room reprieve. Uh, the banking system also needs to do a lot more by giving consideration to those who are their debtors in terms of servicing of existing loans, giving them moratorium, reviewing the interest, because many of them took loans and for six months they have not been able to do anything. Wow. And they have to service the loan. So before you know it, their entire capital, their properties and assets that they have used to as collateral for the for the facility may be taken away from them unless you have some form of intervention uh, from government in terms of uh, in terms of some funding or some intervention from the central bank to the commercial banks to give some tolerance for businesses that are indebted to them because as at uh, 2019 credit are standing with private sector was about 15 trillion. Wow. So you can imagine you suddenly have that shock at the end of the first quarter. Are they going to pay back? So we have been engaging the central bank 
The central bank too have been engaging the, the commercial bank. The central bank on its own has given some concessions in form of moratorium and interest concessions for, for, for on facilities directly given by the central bank. But the facilities that are given by commercial banks are require some much more advocacy and pressure on the commercial banks to give some uh, room for the uh, private sector debtors and to be able to repay, repay the loan. So these are some of the things that government should do, and these are some of the things that government is already doing. Unfortunately, the government too has a very serious constraint with regard to its ability to provide support because they don't have the revenue. You know, so that is why government has been borrowing left, right, and center just to keep to keep the system afloat. Okay, uh, Dr. Yusuf, I want to go back to the, the manufacturers now. And this is in, rela in relation to foreign exchange remittances. You know, a lot of manufacturers still depends on sourcing for their raw materials from abroad. And they will need uh, definitely foreign exchange to do this. As of today, most banks, if not all banks, they don't give out dollars or foreign currency from friends and families that remit uh, foreign currency back home. And as a result, it's having an effect somehow on the amount of foreign currency that we have in the country. What do you think is responsible for this and what do you think the federal government can do in order to assist in getting you know, uh, foreign exchange in that foreign exchange denomination in Nigeria from Nigerian banks? Well, the, even the World Bank and the IMF have been putting pressure on the central bank to ensure that we have a change rate unification, to ensure that we have a market-driven exchange rate. So the way to deal with this challenge is to allow the market to determine rates. If you allow the market to determine the rates, then we are likely to see more remittances. Because we cannot assist the importance of remittances to this economy. Next to all revenue in terms of dollars, remittances is number two. Because over the last couple of years, Remittances, diaspora remittances, have averaged about 20 billion US dollars annually. That's a lot of money. Mm. But if the policy environment is not right, if you continue to impose a rate that is not reflecting the market rate on those who want to bring in the dollars, the dollars will not come. And that will continue to aggravate the problem of supply. This is what we are experiencing now. It will lead to rough manner of under the table transactions, and, and the whole place will just be, be very messy. So the best way to clean up the system is just to allow the market to determine rate. Thank you, Doctor uh, Yusuf, on your submission on the fact that uh, the market should determine the exchange rate. I want to come to the activities of the Korea industries. We have the NIPOST as the regulator, and NIPOST is also an operator in the Korea industry. Now, what do you think is happening here? We have a regulator as well as an operator in the Korea industry. What's your comment on this? And do you think this is actually the best practice Certainly, it's not the best practice. Uh, as a chamber, we have issued a statement on this, and we have written to all the key uh, government ministries and the presidency to look into it. Because if you are talking about ease of doing business, if you are talking about attracting investment, if you are talking about creating jobs in the private sector, the regulatory environment must be right. 
if you have a situation where an operator is also a regulator, it doesn't all go well for the development of that sector. It's not equitable, and it can be very repressive. Because if you have an operator that is regulating his competitors, there cannot be fairness. So the Korea companies have been complaining a lot about this. So we have escalated the matter uh, to the uh, top hierarchy in the ministries and in the political environment and also in the National Assembly. And there's a need to review the current regulatory framework around the Korea industry. And there are also some other provisions in the, in the regulatory guidelines in, released by NIPOS, that uh, the Korea companies should be contributing 2% of their revenue mm. annually. This idea is in addition to the taxes that they pay. So whether you make money or not, whether you make profit or not, you have to contribute 2% of your revenue. Mm. That is not fair. How do you want them to survive? Then there's also another provision that says that any parcel that is less than 5 kg in weight mm. should be exclusively reserved for NIPOS. So even for uh, the customers, how can you impose your service on customers? If I have a letter that is not weighing up to 5 kg and I want a private courier company to pick it, the regulation is saying it cannot be done. I have to go and give it to Naples. That is also not fair. So all these things we need to review to ensure that the regulatory environment is much more investment friendly. We have been talking about ease of doing business. We have been talking about level playing field. We want to attract investment. We want to create jobs. We continue to manage the regulatory environment this way. All of these things will not happen. Thank you, Dr. Yusuf. You mentioned uh, inflationary pressure. Is there anything the federal government can do to reflate the economy? Okay, we, we, we can get uh, Dr. Yusuf there again. Dr. Bunda Yusuf, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on Nigeria's economy today. You've actually mentioned. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, thank you. That is the much that we can take on the challenges manufacturers are facing in the COVID-19 dispensation. You can continue. You can join us on our social media platform as the conversation continues on the platform. On Instagram and Twitter, we are at Nigeria underscore economy and uh, you can also join us on our uh, facebook nigerians economy today you can also catch up with some of the previous episodes of this uh, nigerians economy today and this particular episodes on our youtube channel our youtube channel is nigerians economy today on behalf of the producer i thank our viewers for finding time to join us on this program I am Tunde Odeyemi, thanking you. God bless Nigeria.